Hey guys, <clears throat> I've never done a live video before, but I'm going to do one for y'all, hopefully teach the people that are wanting to learn uh, a couple of the tricks that I've figured out and learn from other people. So I'm going to tie a quick jig for you. The main thing I want to show y'all is when I first started, I know there's some others that did like I did. Everybody said, oh, let's just say Texas toast. Everybody said, oh, you gotta have a, uh, gotta have some Texas toast. Texas toast, Texas toast, it's the best. So I bought some Texas toast. I didn't buy a number 10 Texas toast. I didn't even buy a number five Texas toast. I bought number three. Some people like real skinny jigs. I don't. Especially on an eighth ounce head, it looks funny. So, I'm going to show y'all how to fix that. If you've got a bunch of old Chanel that you like the color or you like the texture, uh, but you don't like the way it looks when it's tight, I'll show you how to do it. So this is going to be a quick and easy. I'm not going to put flash in there. Just quick and easy. For number two, I don't know if y'all can see it. I put the tip of the feather right at the bottom of this knuckle wrinkle. That's my mark for number two hook. Top wrinkle is my mark for number four hook. <clears throat> I cut that now. I just cut some V's out. I can get one. Anyway, I try to get four V's out of it if I can. Sometimes you get a feather that's fuzzy at the bottom or something, or a crappy feather. I also use a saltwater hackle. It is worth the extra money, just for the the fullness and the. It's easier to work with. And if you're selling, it looks a whole lot better. I don't sell jigs anymore. But when I did, I think it made a big difference. So you stack them. I got two V's right here together. And then I got my tip. And I'll put the tip on top of the V's. Grab them with three fingers. There's a natural bend to that feather. I always want that bend facing down. Nothing else, I just like the way it looks. But I do think it adds a little extra action. I wrap it back right about the, from the barb to the tip. Somewhere around there. Take your other two that you cut out, st stack those, and just put them on top. That'll give your tail a little uh, more bulk, so it's not just so skinny. And if you don't, if you put it on there, especially when you first start, your tail is not going to be. It's not going to be like this. It's going to be like this, or like this, or even up. Wrap it tight. But as soon as you get to this point, spin it to where you want it. It's not going to hurt a thing. If I was going to put flash in there, now is when I would do that. Put you a little bit of glue. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Keep things from uh, turning on you later. All right. <clears throat> Here's what I want to show y'all. Yarn. Buy it. Cheap. Walmart or the hobby store or wherever it don't matter Just take you a little piece it doesn't take but about that much to do what you're gonna do but it's easier to work with if you get a long piece there's a mm, I can't tell how much is here 
Uh, 137 yards. You got plenty. <laughs> I got kind of a neutral color just because uh, when you're using like a like a pearl crystal or something like that, uh, your bottom wraps, they, they will show through your other colors. So if you get like a, a black or a red, it's going to show through on, on those kind of uh, uh, chanels. <clears throat> Tie your yarn just like you would uh, your snail. Just put it on there. Wrap it back. Now, I don't go quite as far. You see, I'm barely missing that the point of that, that hook. <clears throat> Reason being, if you go all the way back to where you want your chanel, when you go to wrap your chanel, it's going to fall behind that. Um, and uh, you can keep it from doing that, but it's difficult. It's easier to just stop short. That way you can wrap on the shank and go and ride up onto the yarn. Okay. I don't, I hope that makes sense guys. <clears throat> you can control by twisting it. If I do it flat. If I untwist it, it'll lay a lot flatter. You can get a smaller profile. If I twist it up, it won't lay as flat and it'll give you a little bit of bulk. Okay. You can stop right here. This is where I stop most of my jigs. Uh, just one wrap of yarn, uh, but I made one the other day. Uh, that shad looking one that was real thick. It's got two wraps. Same thing. I just, what I did there is just tied it off. Just two wraps around the head. So this won't go anywhere. Lay it back over the, over the belly. All right. Again, guys, I'm going to stop just a little bit short. I know y'all probably can't see that in the, in this phone. I'm not going quite all the way back because again, if you do, it's going to fall off and you're going to end up wrapping down your tail and it's going to mess everything up. So just stop a little bit short so you have enough room to lay a piece of Chanel right there. All right, same thing. Wrap it back over. Tie it around. That, that locked this down twice, and then I'll do once around the head, not wrap, not locking this down. Take your scissors, cut it off flush. Now, you got plenty of little, you can do three more jigs with that if you want to. Again, I did this double just to show y'all this, excuse me, this number three Chanel is tiny. If you were to put this on a, on a bare hook, It'll catch fish. If they're biting, this will catch fish right here. Just yarn. It's not going to hurt anything. I don't think it looks good. Um, and I like a bigger profile uh, jig. So this is how I do it. <clears throat> if you have a number 10, this is number 3. This is number 10. I don't put anything under my number 10. It doesn't need it. It's got a big profile. I like my the bodies of my baits basically to go from the head straight to the Chanel. I don't want there to be a jump. My tail got a little crooked there. Anyway, so what I do now, put a little bit more glue. When you're using this yarn, guys, make sure you put some glue. Uh, I meant to put some glue between those layers and I forgot, but <clears throat> I never had one come apart on me, but I've always put glue. I don't know, the, the yarn underneath just I'm afraid if I didn't put any glue there that it might it might unravel. So anyway, then you just do your chenille like you always would. Go back to where you want to stop, right about the barb to the tip of the hook. And just start wrapping. Go 
go all the way up as far as you want to go. I don't like any of my thread to show. So I go right up to the head. <clears throat> Use a whip fish finishing tool. I just do three wraps. I pull it down. You can watch that thread suck in there. Now you can't see my threads. Put you a dab of glue where your knot was. And I'll put a little dab on the opposite side just in case something comes undone. I've never had a jig come undone uh, that was glued. So that's it, guys. It takes just a few more minutes, but you can see how full it, it's a it's straight from the jig head to the to the body. I know it's out of focus, but y'all get the idea. If it wasn't, it would be it would be tiny. Now you got a good looking jig head. It's comparable to a plastic or whatever. <clears throat> if y'all want to play around a little bit. I don't know if this is gonna show. See how much thicker this is than this? That way, but this way, this has a belly swell in it. I got this idea from Lane Palmer's uh, Thump Chubbies. Uh, that's a very unique uh, looking bait. I think he did a great job on that. I don't use plastics, uh, not because I don't like them, it's just there's something about catching your uh, fish on something that you made. Uh, it's like shooting a deer with a bullet you built or a rifle that you built. Uh, anyway, you can use that yarn instead of wrapping it this way. All I do is just like this on the bottom until I get it built up to the thickness that I want. Now, again, it's thin. I mean, this is a pill head. It's not much thicker than the pill head, but it's got a deep belly in it. Gives it more of a shad look. So, Anyways, guys, uh, I hope that helped y'all um, kind of cut some of your learning curves down. I found a few videos um, when I was learning that really helped me. Um, if y'all have got any questions, I will try to answer them. Uh, if I need to, I'll, I'll make another video. I'll, I'd like to make a video of the weaving that I do of the different colors. I don't know that it would show up in a, in a cell phone video, honestly. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Y'all have a good night.